Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke on the bench. Uh, today we have, well this is a an old Boyd mortise lock, very similar to the EFCO and that's what's going to be on the job. So this is an old crusty one that's pretty beat up. But what we're going to be doing is converting it to a digital lock. So normally you'd have your handle, your cylinder and you just turn it. But what we're going to be doing is changing it completely. So here we have an adapter plate which is available on our website, part number BL5001357. 2K. Now the idea behind this plate is to be able to adapt the digital lock to the front of it to replace the front handle. So that's what we're going to do. In the adapter kit it comes with a spindle which can be cut down to size, it's a machine piece of steel and it comes with two, two uh, metal threaded recessed nuts. Now for this conversion I've decided to go with a new handle. So that's going to be our handle and that's just a Lockwood handle. That comes with a couple of screws for handing and the actual handle itself. So let's get that off the bench so we can kind of see what's going on here. Let's move these parts aside. More packaging. Here's our lock. Let's put that aside. This is the Borg 5000 lock. Now this is a good code lock. The reason I go for this one over the 2000 is because it's more um, commercial. And this is going on a commercial suite. So yeah, these are your uh, rubber rubber uh, boots you could say you put underneath the lock I'll show you where they go we've got a box of stuff here all our fitting and strike and all that sort of stuff uh, latch and parts we we won't really be needing one of the reasons we went for this particular lock is because it comes with a change key this blue change key means that you can simply put it in turn it and change your change your code so the customer requires that there's an inside handle we won't be using that so we really have to buy the whole lock just to get um, just to get this outside handle. Alright, so here we are here. Comes with the code already preset. There it is there. Weight wise is about two kilo. It's chunky. Just looking at it there. I'll give you some specs on it just for your reference. Uh, 180 body about 45 length of the lever 130 total height mm, late 50s almost 60 okay so to activate this type of lock first thing you want to do is push the C button that's the clear button and then you would go two four eight nine and when you pull the handle down it rotates the spindle and the lock works now because it is a mechanical lock it means you don't have to change the batteries and you can also put the code in any which order the C is a C button. A lot of kids play with this type of lock, so you always got to push the C button before you put your code in because somebody always sort of pushes or bumps a button. You don't want to put your code in and if one of the wrong numbers has been pushed and then start forcing it because you'll actually, you know, do damage to the lock. Let me give you an example. Uh, two, four, so let's go four, two. Uh, and then eight, nine, nine, eight. And you'll see the lock will still activate. So it's pretty much you've got to have all, the, all of the code and the C is optional, but it's a good idea to actually use that. All right, so let's see what we've got to do now to put this on a mortise lock. So the handing of the lock is correct, so that's good. I don't have to mess around with that. If I was to do that, I'd just remove that, spin the handle, but I can live with that. And what we want to do now is we want to put this onto here, which means that these parts have to come off. These uh, towels or posts actually have to come off. Okay, once they've come off, we need to remove this um, bit of, uh, what would you call it, anti-scratch film that is on the metal while it's been produced. Most materials have a, something like this stainless. Perspex also have a bit of, a bit of material like that just to keep it all nice and clean. So there's our plate now. So we're going to spin that over. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, I'm going to attach that. One and two screws. These screws come with the adapter plate. Now we did have the option to use the rubber boot, but to be quite honest with you, I think it's just a bit chunky and it's actually going to sort of overlap the plate. So I'm going to just leave it off. I don't think it'll make it look any nicer. I'm going to tighten these real nice and tight. Okay, so now we have that in place. That is good. Okay, so now we have our internal handle, which is good. And now we have our spindle. So we put this all the way in, and then we would need to cut it 
depending on how far it needs to protrude into the lock. What actually happens now is that this spindle hole is connected to this part here and then from there we would put our handle on the inside using a standard spindle and come through here. Our standard screw holes would come through here just as it normally does and that would attach to the plate here and you can see the difference there. Okay, So this screw is lining up with here, this top screw of this handle is lining up with here. That's a standard screw size thread so there's no um, there's no real different threads there or anything, that's just a standard one. So you could probably even use the standard handles that it comes with. Now once this lock is activated, we'll do that again. Once this lock is activated, what will happen is that when you turn your handle, it'll actually activate this drive right here. This lock's a bit stuck, but it'll actually activate that right there, opening the lock. So there's no more key section in this equation, it's basically this code lock will just activate the spindle. So you need your lock to be in a position where the outside handle is operational and unlocked. Being commercial, we're going to have the inside always free, and that's set up by the actual lock itself. But that's what it will kind of look like from the outside. That's what it's going to look like from the inside, and that's quite quite presentable. So that's the Borg 5000 uh, mortise lock conversion plate, and that's how it all fits together. Basically, it's just replacing the front handle. Um, that's all it basically is, and it uses the same handle footprint. Converts the front handle into a code. So if you were to come up to it and not put the code in, you can't actually, you can't actually activate it. This lock also does have a passage function, so if people are coming and going in throughout the day, we, uh, you don't have to put the code in. They can just use it as a set of handles. I believe you push the F. It's not working. F, two, four, eight, nine. Maybe you push the F in now. Okay, you push the F in after you put the code, and then you can use it as a passage handle. All day, every day, it should keep turning. And to undo that, let's push the C button. Push the C button, pull the handle down, returns to its normal operation. And it's locked. So let's do that again. Push, uh, no, sorry, put the code in, two, four, uh, eight, nine, and then we can uh, pull it down, push the F. Now it's in passage all day, and we can clear it to clear two, four, eight, nine. Sorry, you have to pull the handle down and then push the clear for it to get out of passage. And the change key, once again, when your code's in there and it's right, you can put that in, you can turn it, reset your code, and you're good to go. Okay, any comments, leave them down below, and thanks for watching.